And welcome to the Ukulele Underground Podcast. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. Joining me are Mr. Aaron, the voice, Nakamura. Say what's up, Aaron. What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend, Ferguson. Say what's up, Kahai. What's up? Welcome, gentlemen. It is episode 101. And just like 101, we're going to be teaching you folks some ukulele 101. Why? Because we're the experts, right, Kahai? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, we'll be talking to Kula. I don't know about expert. I don't know about any kind of usable advice in this show, but we are going to talk. That's a guarantee, right? Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> we're going to talk. <laughs> you can't get us not to talk. Yeah, uh, as much could, as some people try. Off. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. You know, like, I guess if you don't want to, and it's, it's fine. We'll miss you. You know, as much as some, <laughs> some comments are less talking, more playing. Yeah, more playing on this podcast. When, <laughs> When we see that, then it's just like, oh, I guess that means we have to talk more. Yeah, than- yeah. You, you know we do the opposite. We've been doing it since we were like two years old, right? Like whatever to- whatever our parents tell us, we always do the exact opposite, right, Kai? This is the, the year of the heel, so we've got to go into it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, uh, without joking aside, what this podcast is, is basically any and all things ukulele. Uh, we are doing this live. There's a live podcast. We do have a live chat, so you guys can ask us questions. We'll try to answer them as best as we can. I'll try to uh, come up with an answer. I'll give you my two cents. The other two guys will give their two cents, and we'll come up with the best six cent answer just for you. Um, but just remember, you know, these are basically our opinions and our uh, based on our um experiences with the ukulele so take them with the grain of salt or with a shot of penicillin <laughs> you know uh, whatever uh, whatever you hear on this you know on this podcast it is our own opinion so yeah do with that as as you will but you know what i mean with the uh with with all our experiences doing the ukulele we, we do have uh tons uh tons of experience with this instrument we can give you know like relatively okay advice yeah i think we've been doing it for a <laughs> hundred episodes now you know and beyond so i think we know like a thing or two, right? Sometimes we're right, you know, <laughs> Sometimes. right? Sometimes we get it right. And, you know, but I'm just trying to cover, cover my grounds here. That we're not, it's not always going to be accurate. <laughs> what is it? Like a uh, uh, wrong clock is always right twice a day. Yes. It's yeah. Like, even, a, even a broken clock is yeah. right twice a day. That's it. That's, even, that's what you want to hear. <laughs> even a broken <laughs> that's podcast. Okay, we are that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's all this podcast. We're real, baby. This is as like, real as it gets. Even even a broken podcast has to be right with three hundred episodes, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we, got, we got to be right sometimes. Yeah, there there you go. See, so have have confidence that we'll try. We'll give you an answer. <laughs> Here we go, Kahai. Uh, so wait, we'll, uh, what do you what do you want to talk about? So while the audience is pouring in, I mean, we gotta wait. You know, there's hundreds of thousands of people that are that are pouring into to watch the podcast. <laughs> so we gotta wait. You know, until we we get all those people seated you know and, and, and comfortable so that they can ask us their their burning questions all right yeah. uh, but ask them on the chat and uh, Kahai will uh, relay them over to me and I'll answer that as best as we uh, as, best as I can and then the other two guys will chime in and we'll create a good conversation really we're just talking to Kula. that's all, all that is, all this is is just you talk okay we're just talk you or Talk anything. You can ask us any questions as well. I mean, about, you know, about ukulele, about like 90s cartoons, wrestling, um, Mario Kart, some video games, you know, yeah. like uh, uh, mechanical keyboards. You can ask us about playing cards. Basically, basically all those things, right, Kahai? One Piece. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we, we won the award for best ukulele podcast. Yeah, yeah. But and... we're, not, we're, not, we're not a one dimensional <laughs> podcast, right? To... Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not limited to just yeah. ukulele. Kahai knows kind of a lot about very high end headphones. Headphones, yeah, oh. as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so uh, we, we could give, you know, like life advice, medical advice, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, probably. Law, not. Like law advice. We could do that, right? 
No, we can give. Are well, lawyers telling yeah. us not to? <laughs> no, we 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 can give advice, legal advice, but we can't tell you to take the advice, yeah, right? We, can, yeah, we should we not take that. Yeah, we can give political advice as well. I know it's a, it's a, a you know it's an election year this year, right? Yeah, yeah. should get on that maybe. Yeah, and that's what people are talking about on podcasts now. So. <laughs> We're not. Talk- I'm not touching that with a hundred foot pole, as you guys probably know. But just listen to this podcast. Not once. Not once have I talked, po- and I I actively shut down any political talk on this podcast because that's not what you guys listen, listen to this podcast for, right? It's about ukulele and cartoons. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Kahai, hit me with something. What yeah. do you want to talk about? Uh, well, before we we started the podcast, mm. you were kind of talking about like uh, you're listening to Taimani's new album. Yes, yes, actually. So um, let me uh, let me kind of back up a little bit and, and tell you how I got to that rabbit hole. So um, I'm kind of uh, I'm trying to reinvent some of the songs that I've been playing for a long time. And one of the songs that I've been playing for a long time and I like a lot, okay, is uh, is body surfing. Everyone knows body surfing is super popular, you know, with with the uh, with the ukulele community. A lot of people want to learn it when they see it. They're like, oh, that song is pretty awesome. Like I would like to learn and perform that song. Um, we we have a version of that song on ukulele underground on the on the UU plus solos and stuff. Um, my favorite version of it has always been the uh, the pure heart uh so jake shimabukuro's old band's version that was recorded in in the pure heart 2.0 album that's basically for a long 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 time that was the only version that i knew of until i heard the original version by ota san okay so let's just start out with that one of my favorite songs but you know what like it's it's come to that point where because like so much people play that song and so much like uh tutorials have come out for it and and you know and it, it's it's getting kind of played out honestly you know like that song is overplayed and and a lot of my colleagues and and uh, and fellow professional ukulele players would agree but as much as i i agree that it is overplayed i still love that song it doesn't make it a bad song that song is still great yeah it has an amazing melody it really shows what you can do with the ukulele and like and the limitations uh and uh, and how you can get over those limitations of ukulele it showcases what this thing can do it is an amazing song there's a reason why a lot of people like playing that tune body surfing if you've not heard it is uh is written by herb ota uh or ota san um which you know then like it was it was popular in its own right when he first you know he first released it um but then the the version in my generation that came out was by pure heart like i mentioned earlier that one kind of ran off with it like ever since i saw that version uh the a live version of it um that Pure Heart played for uh, for Hot Hawaiian Nights. We talked about this before. Um, that was a TV show that did back then. Saw the live uh, version. Saw the energy that Jake brought to that performance, and saw like I already liked the song from the uh, from from the album. But watching him play it live with so much energy, with like the the use of the the tremolo and like and the fast strumming, that was it. Like I was hooked after that. I'm like that needs to be in my set forever, <laughs> and. Since then, it has been in my set forever. I've I actively play that song still, no matter how you know how much we think it's it's kind of you know overplayed or played out or whatever. I still love that song. Like I said, doesn't make it a bad song. It's still great, and it showcases the ukulele. Now, I wanted to kind of revisit it and and do maybe something different with it because I've been playing it the same way um, with some minor tweaks here and there, but I've been playing it the same way for maybe two decades, you know? So as an artist, like I kind of want to evolve. So I was trying to uh, maybe revisit the original version of that of, of body surfing, which is the Otasan version. So I listened to Otasan version and I haven't listened to it for a long time. And that's the song is kind of rock. Like, yeah. it's a rock song. It's got, like, these power drums and stuff that's kind of happening in there. The groove... It, it came out in the 80s, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something like that. The groove or is totally that different. Or something. Yeah. It's not that, like, that kind of pure heart, like... Yeah. Isn't, it's not that at all. Like, it's it's kind of this rock groove with, with power drums. Isn't, yeah. like, yeah, and isn't the even the title Body Surfing, isn't it supposed to be, like, kind of a play on, like, surf rock? Like, wipe out? Yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds like surf rock. Honestly, yeah, yeah. it sounds like yeah. surf rock. So, 
Um, so I'm just kind of like, wow, I, I completely forgot that that's what it was supposed to be. It's supposed to kind of have this rock feel to it. And um, not to mention the part that I focused on, that the reason why I wanted to listen to it is because there is a breakdown in the, uh, in the middle of the song that is not in the Pure Heart version. The Pure Heart version is basically uh, Jake arranged it so that it's like chorus, which is the... And then uh, you repeat it again, that's the chorus. And then it goes to the verse, which is. Then repeat. And then there's another part, the second part of the verse is. Oh. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> And that's the verse, and then it goes back to the, goes back to the chorus. But there's actually a part between the verse and the chorus. So it goes. And it goes, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, um. Um. So it actually doesn't even go back to the doesn't go back to that. It goes straight back into the verse again. There's a there's a part in the middle that goes back to the verse. Okay, so that's like the missing piece that I would I wanted to listen to the original for. Okay, so with that set up. Now I'm like, okay, well, who else did body surfing. I want to know like what everybody else is doing with body surfing. So I found a few versions of body surfing that I, I took interest in. Okay, um, of course, you know, one uh, Taimane Gardner like did a version of body surfing and she kind of made it her own. It became more Taimane with the, uh, you know, with more of a flamenco flair in there, which was great, you yeah. know, like as I expected from a Taimane song. And, okay? and was that the version that Honoka and Azita did? Was it based off of Taimane's or? No, because uh, what Taimane's version of body surfing, um, the recorded version came out in, uh, what was that album called? It wasn't her latest one, but the one before oh, that. Okay, so yeah. after. So after, yeah, yeah, so it, the Honoka Nazita's version, uh, the the famous one got millions of views. Yeah, what, yeah. Was that, that like, came out in yeah, 2013. pretty pretty early, and yeah. that was like it's like at Waikiki Beach and stuff. I remember yeah. that. Um, so not the same. Um, now, I found a few notable versions. Like I said, first off, the, uh, the, the Taimane Garner one, which is, which is good, so exactly what you would expect. Uh, there's some, you know, like other covers and stuff. Uh, there was, uh, surprisingly, there was like a, like a flamenco guitar group that covered body surfing, which is pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, that, uh -huh. was, that was pretty cool, you know? So there's that. I forgot what their name is. But um, one that I took interest in, so now to answer your question, Kahai, like there's, uh, these are songs that I've been listening to, and that kind of, got me to the rabbit hole because I was looking for body surfing versions of it. It led me to um Vipe I don't want to get it wrong. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look I'm gonna look it up. They're they're called Vi what is Vipuna. So Vipuna's version uh that album came out in 2018. So they have a version of body surfing which sticks closer to the uh to the original um Otasan version, at yeah. least the parts, but it has that the groove of pure heart, oh. which is a cool, like that's kind of what I was looking for. Yeah. What marries the two, you know? Like, um, and then I listened to the rest of the Vaipuna album. Awesome. I mean, I love Hawaiian, it's mostly Hawaiian music, if not all Hawaiian music, and then there's like that one body surfing song in there, you know? Amazing, amazing album. If if you guys like Hawaiian music, great harmonies awesome instruments and stuff Ukul, you know it was very ukulele heavy as well check that out but what was cool with that body surfing version not only did it like uh did it kind of stay true to the uh to to the original version of body surfing they he puts in like some really cool like kind of riffs and lines in there yeah, like uh, i guess own. yeah there there is there is a solo in um in the otasan version where like um 
Uh, Otosan kind of does this, like, yeah, like a surf rock solo. It's not present in the Vaipuna version, but uh, what Vaipuna does is they did the the um, the, the verse again, but they he, he did kind of like some reharmonizing on the uh, on the uh, on the second verse. Yeah. Beautiful, just really, really, really cool, and like approaching the uh, the the melody line a little bit differently the second time around. Just you know, just just masterful. Um, Reimagining yeah. of, uh, of of what of what it is uh, without straying too far away from it, just yeah. really, really, yeah. really good. So, so that one is strictly acoustic, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an Not, acoustic version because, like, the original Otosan version yeah. is yeah, like, right. <laughs> yeah, he has like all yeah, kinds yeah. of so like, like said, yeah. and all kinds of. It has the uh, you know, it has the um, the the groove of the pure heart version, but the parts of the old okay. Otasan version. So that's the second notable one. The first one, like I said, is Taimani Garner. Then I got I got to the um you know I got to the the Vaipuna version, listened to that. So I'm just like, okay, cool. Well um now go following that thread, I'm like, I I like you know Taimani's version. Let's see what Taimani is up to now. Okay? Because I heard that album before. Uh the one where she's like, you know, it it looks like what is that album called? See I, I don't I don't want to well, yeah, I don't want to just like say stuff, but was that? While you're looking that up too, for people who are listening, uh, Vaipuna is like Hawaiian, so it's W A I P U N A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. W A I P U N A. Um, so I, I guess that album. Oh, it was a long time. So it might have been because it's 2012. That ukulele dance album with uh, with body surfing in there. If the video from uh, oh, from yeah. Honokanazita 20, 2013, 2013 was, was Honokan maybe Zita. maybe. Because I know that they really looked up to yeah to to Taimane, Taimane when Taimane. they were yeah right but that you know like that version of uh, that that they do has been kind of around for for like a long time anyway that's kind of yeah, and that, and it's like what they teach at like say Sukuma school or or yeah. even because they came from Jody's yeah. you know ukulele hale hey shout out to ukulele hale yeah. you know they uh, um Honokanazita came from ukulele hale and I think that's the version that they teach at ukulele hale anyway oh, okay. so okay. I wouldn't say that it was kind of this yeah, but maybe like Taimani, yeah but i'm sure they took a lots of influence from it yeah. yeah but that was 2012 i didn't realize how old that but so i've heard that album before a ukulele dance i was like that's that's cool so then uh her two latest albums which are elemental and the latest one hawaii which was uh released in 2012 okay uh 2022 so elemental 2018 2022 was hawaii now elemental Good stuff. Nice little, you know, like nice transition. I was kind of like, okay, I I feel like I've listened to enough of Taimana's albums to kind of know where her songs go. You know what I mean? Like, and I know her style. I know her strengths and weaknesses and stuff. I kind of can like can hear an, a, a Taimane album. Yeah. You know, like without even you listening to the album, like I know what. Yeah, exactly. What it, yeah. I know what to expect. Right. Then I listened to the Hawaii album, which. Hot dang. As a person who did um, Bandido Tyler, which is a concept album. Um, so my concept for Bandido Tyler, it was like a fake movie. With, but I wanted to make the real soundtrack to this fake movie. So that means there was parts. There was, you know, there was like characters. Scenes, there were scenes that in my yeah. head and stuff that was kind of playing. And, uh, and each song has its place in said fake movie. You know, yeah. this was that to like taking 10 levels you know uh, like because she actually did a live performance yeah you know like uh entitled hawaii like mm -hmm. she did a whole stage show you know that that has these songs in it so she did what i did except it was a real stage show it was the real uh um uh, album or, or real music to the real stage show whereas mine is like a fake movie you know and amazing everything that i said about like i kind of know what like a what what a taimani album is should or you know it sounds like right listening to the hawaii album blew my mind hole it was <laughs> just like it was refreshing uh to to hear like her new take but the thing is it's still you you can tell it's still taimani like the way that you know the the lines that she plays the techniques that she uses it's still that you know like the the re reliable um uh, uh rasquedos that she does the, yeah. the rolls and stuff it's still got the reliable like uh tremolos it's still chalk filled with all that stuff 
But I think, you know, and of course, as, as every artist should be, we should like kind of evolve and, yeah. and, 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 and reach you the can, next level. But you can see her yeah, maturing. Yeah, like hot dang. As like, an artist. Just like her note choices and, and, and like and melodies. Because for me, I'm a big melody guy. Yeah. It's, you know, like I like really complicated stuff and really like, you know, like masterful and just uh, like virtuosic kind of work. But sometimes in that, you lose melody you know like i think it turns to turns out to be too complicated and whatever that it loses the uh, like uh, for me at least you know like it loses that melodic or, sense to it you know i think i like when uh music gets like really complicated it kind of feels like it doesn't have a direction that it's going towards like yeah. it's leading you down yeah i feel like or like when we used to go to nam right and we hear like people playing at the boots and you kind of just hear like yeah, sure which is great. Which how is fast which is great. You can go yeah, or how, how and, and yeah. that's you can play. Like for an, at Nam, that's the musician's mm. job, right? Yeah, it's like, I'm showing Just, you what this instrument can, can do. do. Yeah, yeah, not necessarily the limits what of it. I yeah. can do. Right? So you know, I mean, I've mentioned on the podcast, I enjoy things like polyphia or whatever. But even that, like some of the you know, like some of the arrangements for like for polyphia it's gets melodic. a little too much. Yeah. That like that it loses me uh, as an as an audience member, like because y- me as a as an instrumentalist, as a musician, I can appreciate it for its masterful work. As like, man, that's some hard lines that, that he's playing, and he's yeah. like stringing them together. Yeah. Really, like as you know, as as a player, like that is a level that I can only dream of, you know, kind of thing. But would you know, like, would it be something like on a playlist of something that I would like oh. listen to? Maybe, like, maybe. You know, like if I was, I'd have to be in the mood for it, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But it wouldn't be something that like would just you can you know. And like Polyphia's music is like they make really good hooks too yeah. sometimes, and you can like memorize the hooks. But then like some of their solos is like I don't know, I can't memorize right, their right. solo. But even then, hooks are hooks are enough. You know what I mean? Like yeah, if, yeah. If, if, if it's in there, yeah. If it's if it's a good hook, then then that's that's good. Okay, so I you know with uh, with with time on his new album. The um the melody lines were really well done. Like I have to say, really, 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 really well done. And not just well done. I think it was done with a purpose because you she has to write for the stage show. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think every melody line, every line had purpose, and you can. It, I never, I didn't see. I, I'm now I'm kind of regretting not being able to see that show like live. But it's almost like I can see the show. Like yeah. as I'm like as I'm listening Just to, by listening yeah, to yeah it. but listening to the album, which and, is the point, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like that's that, that that's what it's supposed to be. Amazing. I I can't like I can't recommend it enough. That album is the whole album is amazing. I and uh, and in the beginning she does kind of like a an intro, you know, like very like if you were to go to. Uh, um, uh yeah like to polynesian culture center like where they have the the show like in the beginning yeah, yeah. like there's the first track is kind of like that that's we're just cool. like okay that's yeah. that's cool but then once you get into it you're like oh snap what's this amazing music coming at my face you know yeah the you describing it i just went yeah. to the luau at kilohana and what it, like that show is called like the uh journey of i forget whatever <laughs> kind of like that it's kind of like that yeah. So, and it's like the whole thing is like they bring out fire dancers and stuff but they're telling it like there's like a narrator it's like yeah. in the beginning and there's like smoke <laughs> yeah. and it's like dark and stuff yeah well actually uh, mm. Taimani is really good friends with that that guy Kil- Kilo Kilo yeah. Wong yeah yeah and so so re- uh, a few years ago he mm. put together like a show yeah, yeah and it was the the story of everything mm. and I I don't know if it is, but she may have written some of the songs that were, were mm, was on that. Mm. But like, yeah, it's uh, it's a Hawaii like, it's Hawaii's poet laureate is Kealoha Wong. Yeah, and um, and he comes from he also comes from a physics background, so he's telling the story from the Big Bang oh, to now. Yeah, 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 like from the standpoint of both a physicist and like a Hawaiian, mm. like you know cultural that's so practitioner cool. that's so cool and so like so he created something like you know a stage show mm-hmm. that he he toured around the country and he performed it with like his troupe mm-hmm. and then he and also she... he also made it into a movie mm-hmm. and i'm pretty sure she was part of that oh wow cool i don't know if she wrote for that for that yeah, show yeah. as well but like 
I could see where like you know mm-hmm. like yeah I should do something similar and yeah. like Taiwanic could would be one to pull it off. Nice. So, like, that I mean it's it's makes it's sense. Just, it's just good. It's just one of those like um, I've I've known an artist for so long because I mean I've you know I've been listening to her since she was like. Uh, busking like you know yeah. like on the streets Waikiki. of Waikiki and stuff you know what I mean but now she's like big time and whatever but um, just the the evolution of like songs that she can write I mean I, I it's it was just it was just a nice surprise it's one of those like I wouldn't have stumped because I you know like I've listened to her for so long even like with Jake I'm kind of just like I'm not listening to like every every new album or every track of new album and yeah. stuff like I kind of just you know, I'll skim through it and whatever. Well, I like this one, this one, this one, and whatnot. Yeah. So it was a nice... I wouldn't um, necessarily just go and listen to Taimani's album. You know, this. I, I'm glad I was in a hunt and I had like, you know, I was looking for something and I just stumbled across it. And I'm just like, wow. I gave it a chance and I was like, dang, I'm so happy to <laughs> like, yeah. like, check this out. Because you know? it is like when you're hanging out with yeah. them, right, as friends, it's like, you yeah. don't want to talk shop. And then you, it'd be surprising if Taimani was like, Audrey, I listened to your new album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just, you know, just that. And I think, and what's cool is like, yes, she's she's great. Don't get me wrong. She's an amazing, amazing player and stuff. But I think the way that the melody lines are, you know, melody lines are written, it's more like it, it has a, um, so much emphasis on melody that it doesn't have to be complicated, mm-hmm. you know? Like, it's not trying yeah. to be complicated because the melody is what's important. And that, like, that speaks to my heartstrings because yeah. I love, love, love melody. And I would take a good melody over um, good or, 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 like, fast, badass technique kind of thing. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, give me five, ten really awesome, very well-crafted notes rather than a hundred really impressive looking or sounding notes yeah you know what i mean like it and it's it's to each his own you know what i mean like it, there's there's room for all, like all all that stuff but yeah. for me and, and you know king. that she can do that yes yes <laughs> so yes. it's like you know yeah she's but she's at that point where like i don't have to prove anything yeah to anyone right. <laughs> so. exactly exactly <laughs> well and then there's also like because melody can be simple but it can have like no purpose mm. and then it's like i don't really remember those kind of stuff right like mm-hmm. if somebody's improvising and they just play one note yeah it's like okay yeah, yeah. that's cool i guess but it's not like i'm gonna be like mm-hmm. that was amazing yeah that was such a memorable me- melody line mm-hmm. so i think it really is like having that purpose is what mm-hmm. makes things like meaningful yeah All right yeah and that's what that's what songwriting is is like yeah. storytelling so if she has a story to tell yeah she, and she did it well then, right so yeah. like one of you know uh one of the albums that, that i've talked about in the in in the past like few months and and we had you know we had sammy over like as a guest like not mm-hmm. too not too long ago because he released his uh Ver album you mm-hmm. know and that was another album that i listened to a lot lately and my uh particularly uh my favorite track from it is frost because uh-huh. that you know a, a lot and it's it's tough because you know we talk about melody lines and stuff and it was almost like that album is meant to be you know because he's ta- he's playing with mood like he's trying yeah. to create like kind of a soundscape that like creates a mood instead so if we're talking mood it's not necessarily melody driven yeah. it's more just like here's a sequence of chords and notes to bring you like yeah, to yeah. that kind of to that space you know like yeah. that mood that space that emotion and whatever and but, because yeah. he does a lot of harmonics yes yes then yes. It, it's kind of like mood music more, yeah, yeah, yeah more so than any so uh the track frost for me is a an amazing marriage between the two like yeah. of trying to create a scene or a mood so for me frost and and you know like it's not like i know what's going on in sammy's head like while you know or or he you know just like with Hawaii, like she kind of in the first or second track she tells the story where like i know what to expect or i know what to or she's giving me suggestions of of what the images are in my head whereas yeah. when i'm listening to Ver from uh, from sammy i'm just kind of like uh i have to come up with it on my own uh-huh. yeah so frost is a great marriage of the track where like he is like giving me the right chords and sequences to get the emotion 
of uh, of frost of, for me it's not just fro- like from coming from Hawaii I would think frost and snow and stuff to be kind of like winter winter wonderland magical kind of happy thing but this is not you know like Sammy's very the, the album's very moody you know uh-huh. as as uh, as he said in in the podcast and it is that so in this in this particular scenario frost is more just like like uh, the feeling of being in the you know in 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 a in a winter wonderland but in more of the sense that like like it's more of a of a wonder like you're it, you're you're looking at everything kind of iced up is more like whoa like that's that's really cool rather than hey let's go skating and go playing more just like like bam here's the scene and like and the melody that that he plays with the chords and stuff it's just like that like that feeling that you get in that in frost or in a in a land of frost and the uh, the way that he incorporates his um his harmonics is what's really cool because it kind of gives me the feeling of like of falling snow you know or, or just like snowflakes but not in a christmas way you know what i mean like but in like a good winter like it's like yeah. winter way uh, you know and, and and i think it's it's good because um it is still melodic i think the sequence that he does with you know with that brings enough melody but also sets up the uh you know the uh the painting that he's trying to paint yeah. so love 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 that frost track so those are three tracks that i've been obsessed with for 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 a little bit now because uh, Vipuna's Body Surfing, uh, the Hawaii album by Taimane, <laughs> all and, of the tracks, all <laughs> the tracks, and uh, and of course the whole Ver album. But my favorite yeah. is Frost, just because if we're talking like what I like, what I normally listen to, it's like songs with a good hook, good melody line, and Sammy just just knocked it out of park with a good hook, good melody, and good technique because his harmonics in that clean. Like so good, so good. Okay, yeah. proud of my son. <laughs> so did he, did he win that award for, for best? I don't know. Uh, album? I, don't so. I don't think so. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think so. But you know, I demand a recount for my son. <laughs> I had justice for Sammy <laughs> if he did it. I don't think he did, but <laughs> but he won. He won an Something. award, right? From, I think so. From some, yeah, yeah. One of the their awards. If he did, then congratulations. But if he didn't, then it's a travesty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So those, if you're asking Kahai, those are tracks that that I've been uh, that I've been really digging lately. Ukulele centric yeah. tracks. I think, and for people who are listening, they should know that we're talking about Sammy Four String Boy. Four String Boy, yeah, Sammy yeah. Turton. But if you want to look him up, it, I think you were saying that yeah. to find that album, his name is actually Four String. Four Boy. String Boy. Four, yeah. the number four. <laughs> yeah. And then String Boy, one word. Four, the number four, String Boy. Yeah. You should definitely yeah. find it. Yeah, so good. I'm just like, you didn't go with Sammy Turton? <laughs> I was looking up Sammy Turton on uh, on Spotify. You couldn't find it. You'd have to look under um, Four String Boy. Maybe yeah. that's like, he's just so well yeah, known by yeah, yeah, his yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to make things easy for like his followers and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so those are three uh, tracks. That, but I mean, there's been some great tracks that, that you know, that, that have come out and stuff. But I feel like those i've been i've been digging but you know other ones yes not necessarily yeah brand new but just yeah but just what I've, you've been into I've, been, recently. I've been into yeah yeah i mean people are, are are putting together some some amazing stuff as well i know like um uh i'm i'm friends with uh with with Ken, of course kanyo is, is is my friend and he's always like kind of introducing me to uh to to new artists or new like reggae artists and stuff that are kind of singing kalehua who is a uh, um, a member of Ekolu, like is uh, is releasing like little mini songs, you know, every now and then. So that's stuff that uh, Kali who is like latest releases have been something that I've been listening to a lot. Um, uh, Brittany Paiva, an- another like female ukulele player that's doing some amazing stuff. I think her producing work really, really good. Like uh, she's been collaborating. It's, it's mostly collabs. Like she collabs with like some pretty cool artists and uh, like Chardonnay and you know and, and uh, a bunch of different art and I I feel like her work is also notable uh, specifically um, her ukulele work yes but the production side really good I think she's really honing into the production side of of, of things 
Yeah. Uh, what else? Rio yeah. has been doing some great yes! stuff. Rio yes. Saito. Rio Saito. He's and been doing a lot of jazz, like with with, with like a band, like ensembles. a full band. Really, yeah. really, really cool. So that's you know that's some someone who's who's also doing some pretty amazing stuff. But yeah, so I uh, I've been I've been enjoying some good ukulele content. Num, 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 num. <laughs> Just yeah, consuming some good uke stuff. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you okay. wanna, yeah, yeah, I'll answer some questions that people might have now that I've talked for half an hour. <laughs> I'm just see whenever like whenever I'm passionate about something or whenever you know like I I feel like I can talk on and on and on about it because like I think um, albums or just songs that people write, but but albums in general is a nice snapshot of who that artist is at that point in time. Yeah. So like listening to an album really gets you to understand like who that artist is, what they were into, what kind of techniques, what kind of melody lines, what's going on in their head, what influences them. And like, and you can really get to know a person like that, you know, just by uh, at least the artist side, you know, of that person by listening in. Cause you can, you can hear joy, you can hear pain, you can hear uh, like troubles, you can hear uh, like hardships, you can feel love, like in, in, and it shows in, in these, because, you know, we're not like, you know, we're not signed to like major label corporations and stuff. So these are all passion projects for a lot of these people. And you can hear the passion going through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, bringing him back to like yeah. why you got into it. Yeah. And uh, so Denise said, when you are learning a difficult piece of music like body surfing, mm-hmm. can you describe how you might decide what to learn first? Do you find the hardest part and start mm-hmm. there or do you start at the beginning? Okay. Um, well, you wanna you know you wanna do part by part. Okay, and like with uh, with the way that we did body surfing, there's like there's the verse, there's the chorus, there's you know there's the uh, the bridge, right? Like that's kind of how we how we did it. Um, pick the part that really piques your interest. Okay, and and learn that that part first. For me, it would you know um, because of melody, I really like the chorus, which is that. If you can get that down, then then you'll you'll be into you know, you'll really get into it. You're gonna be wanting to play that song because it's been th- maybe thirty, <laughs> almost thirty years. No, no, man, almost thirty years. Like maybe twenty five years, twenty six years that I've been kind of like obsessed with that. You know, with that too. Um, and I still play it because that melody line. It's like it's so haunting, you know. Like it's just something about it. Like Ulta really nailed it with that one, I think, you know. And um, uh, I would I would start with that. Whatever catches you, okay. Like I just learn that because you just want to get interested, and in, so you have to like the song in order to commit to learning the full song. Because the what what I like to think is that even if you don't learn the whole song, if you just learn that chorus part and you move on to something else. <laughs> at least you, yeah. you're happy yeah at least that. you're happy and that's like that's kind of what i'm getting at you know what i mean like if i was a beginner and I'm, i heard that song if i just learned how to play just that part yeah i'd walk away like oh man watch this body serving and then like yeah. and then that's it and i don't have to you know I'm, I'm not gonna go around and performing it and stuff and even if i am a performer i just have that part maybe i can sneak that part into a, another song that i play in yeah. that key you know it, if i play in b flat yeah. just just do a little body surfing, you know, and then go right back into whatever <laughs> song that I'm doing and stuff. I think there's there's always, you can always mm-hmm. learn more to a song. Yes. Because even when you think you master a song, there's always like something that, there's a, probably a part that is like, oh, I never even knew that yeah, they had yeah, that part yeah. or whatever. But yeah, don't get it down or like don't let it get you down yeah. where it's like, ah, oh, I, like, I have to learn this part, but I'm yeah. frustrated. I'm just gonna like, I think the thing is, if it's getting you frustrated, like just you know, like let yeah. it go. Like it, yeah, it's better to let the song go than mm-hmm. to like say, "I'm so frustrated, I'm gonna quit the whole ukulele." Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, I, I could, I think I can say that like ninety nine percent of the people who want to learn how to play Stairway to Heaven, yeah. <laughs> like, just learn just that <laughs> intro. And they're stoked, and they're, you know, yeah. and they're very happy. Very, they're like, I don't need to learn the rest of that. Yeah. I learned. Or smoke in the water. Oh yeah, or right? smoke yeah, in the water. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. need to learn the whole thing, you know, the, the whole thing. So that's how I would approach it. I mean, sure, you have the intentions of learning the whole song, you know, like as as a whole. That's great. 
But always start with something that you you enjoy and something that will connect you with the song that makes yeah. you want to learn the whole thing. Okay. Um, and then my best advice is to um, sure practice the song. But what I would do for practice outside of like learning the notes and the, the you know the techniques for the song is to practice that key. Okay. What I mean by that is body surfing is in the key of G minor. Okay. I would do the 30 minute practices that we preach about here on G minor, okay? And because if I get proficient, if I get really good at the key of G minor, if I'm learning body surfing, nothing is gonna be like, nothing is gonna be foreign. You know what I mean? Like everything that I do in body surfing is gonna make sense because I'm proficient in the key of G minor. Does that make, does that make sense to you yeah, guys? Yeah. So for Jumping example- Jumping from certain notes. Right, right, right. So for example, the G minor scale, And it's, you know, it's extensions like high and low. So, so those are the notes uh, in, in, uh, in, from, from my C notes, the lowest note that I have to the, to the last note there. And of course, extending. So just to kind of give you guys an example, those are the notes available to me in the key of G minor on my ukulele. And then learning where those notes are on all the strings. So instead of just going, uh, right, for example, like, so that means I only really played one note in E and the rest is an A. So what I would do is I play the scale, play the scale again, add one note to the E string. Oh. Then add one more. Then one more. Then one more. Then one more. Then one more. <laughs> I think you guys can kind of understand. Because what that does is it then gets me proficient on all the notes in G minor on the A, then on the E, then you can do the same thing with you know with, with the C. So knowing where all the notes are in G minor on my fretboard is already like you know a big 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 step forward in learning body surfing. Then um, that you know G minor is uh, you can consider it a B flat major. Learning the chord family to uh, to to B flat major, knowing like you know knowing all the chords there. Um, then any chord that comes up shouldn't be a surprise maybe there's a d in there like that you know uh, which is basically the only one that's outside of the b flat major uh, chord family so that means you just have to add that d to the to the uh, to the chords in the b flat major chord family and you should know all the notes all the chords and sequences in body surfing and you're proficient in it and then um you know like practice the the inversions of each chord like g minor g minor g minor and c minor c minor c minor and f e flat So now, I wouldn't just be better at body surfing. I would be better at every G minor song that, that I'm going to come and B flat <laughs> you know, that, that I'm going to come across. So learning the key of the song, or practicing, not yeah, learning and practicing the key of the song, uh, is actually very beneficial to learning the song itself. Sure, learning the song itself, learning the notes, we, we, that is very important so that you can learn the song. But if you're proficient in that key, then, um, then you would just be getting better overall. Yeah. That's my advice. Yeah. I think uh, mm -hmm. the way that I read Denise's question too yeah. is like if you want to learn like a pretty complicated song, and it's just like you're just overwhelmed by like, yeah. you know, you don't necessarily, I think like, uh, I think what you said, like pick whatever part like you want to learn yeah, or it like yeah. hooks you, right? But if you just feel like I just don't know where to start even, mm -hmm. right? Like it's just like there's so much to do to. Uh, so like advice that we, we would give to people learning even like solo songs is learn the chords first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised how many um, we've had students like play solos and stuff. And then we say like, oh, do you can you play 
the song without like the picking and just play yeah. the backing chords to it. Yeah. And they're like, no, I don't know that, mm -hmm. right? Like I only learned the picking. Yeah. But if you learn the backing chords to mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. you get the timing and the feel of the song. Yeah. And then you also, it gives you um, tips for like, oh, it's this note is being played here because the backing chord is like for body surfing is like that's actually like a D minor is being played here and that's why you hold this chord, like mm. this chord shape or yeah. you're playing this type of uh, run in this yeah, place yeah. because it's based yeah. off a D minor. It, it, yeah, that would probably be where you start. If like, you just have yeah, like no idea, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think yeah. come up with the, try to practice the background or the you know the the backing yeah. strum chords and stuff to so just get to know the song better. That would yeah, be and then yeah. all the inversions of those chords, yeah, yeah, like will no. help. And out. I, th I yeah. think like especially now with like chord melodies being the thing yeah. that everybody wants to learn, or like mm -hmm. a finger picking and stuff. Like that is people see that and they're impressed and they're like, oh, it's like a picking or a solo song. Yeah. But first and foremost, like though, like when you learn those songs, they're based off of chords. Yeah, yeah. So you yep. should know what chords are being played. Yeah, and like we even have for our live coaching. Yeah, we have a lot mm -hmm. of people who are learning songs like that, and they ask you like, oh, can you help me with my finger position? And it's kind of like, well, if you just like look at what chord is supposed to be in that spot, mm -hmm. you can kind of figure out mm -hmm. why they're saying you can like, explain oh, yeah. this particular note or why you're mm -hmm. moving from here to here. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. That I mean, like, you know, just getting the uh, the background, getting a feel for the, the song, getting the feel for what the changes are, getting a feel for like where the notes are supposed to be. If you can, you know, going back to kind of me telling you to practice the key, if you know the key, if you know the inversions, you can, you know, and you know, maybe three, four keys, you know, like pretty common keys, you can pretty much create finger style arrangements on your own because yeah. uh if you know where the you know where the chords are if you know the background chord to it then coming up with the melody line should be pretty easy since you know all the notes in that key on all the strings right mm. so because you would know which notes not to go to you know or it's uh it's not like a mystery like yeah. why did this person pick this chord to yes. play these notes and it's just like because those yeah. notes and that chord yeah, yeah line up on the same spot <laughs> and, on the fretboard. and then it becomes as easy as like does it sound higher or lower than where you know where i'm at like or does the melody line look like it's going high or low and you can kind of know because you're if you know the key you know which notes are possible that they're playing mm -hmm. you know and if it doesn't sound like that go a little bit outside but for the most part those are the notes that that will stay because uh, those are the good sounding notes in, in the key sometimes Sometimes you go a little outside and it sounds awesome, you know, but for the most part, like practice the key, practice the key and practice the background, practice all I that mean, stuff. Get to know the song. Yeah. yeah. I remember talking to my sister and she's like, it seems like magic to me because you just can pick out any notes or chords yeah. from your whole fretboard and stuff. And I like, but it's like, but if it's in one key, yeah, that's seven chords yeah, maybe notes, yeah, once chords, you figure that notes. out then yeah. it limits Six everything chords. down to mm -hmm. so yeah what it possibly could be and that's that's where i, I talk about like just a high low like what does yeah. it sound like you know does it sound like higher or lower i mean if you look at like most songs the most songs have mm -hmm. five chords at the most maybe right yeah. and then like a lot of songs only have four chords so, yeah so it's yeah. not that bad all right next that was a great question <laughs> it's a long convoluted answer but hopefully that was helpful <laughs> yep uh genevieve Thanks. said i'm hosting an ukulele event at my home yeah. in a couple of weeks any tips what would artists like but might be reluctant to ask for slash tell me hmm i don't know water <laughs> like sometimes or just, you know sometimes when i go to like someone's home and stuff like and maybe yeah. it's just the asian in me and i'm just like I could be like, I could be coughing, like, and really like yeah. suffering and stuff, and I'd still be hesitant to ask for, like, you know, for anything. But um, if if we're we're talking specs and whatever, like, kind of no, um, <clears throat> I would tell them the layout of the room. I would tell them like, you know, what, like how like how much space they have, or you know, if you could draw them a picture or whatever of what, what the layout is gonna look like, where the table or chairs are gonna be, how far, you know, the the performer or the teacher is gonna be from uh, you know from their audience. Um, 
and if there's going to be some kind of setup you know like if you have a small sound system that, that you're going to be doing if they're going to be just performing acoustically because if it's a small room then you don't necessarily need that um if it's a, if it's a relatively bigger room or if you know if there's enough people and people can't in the back can't hear you might want to go with a small like little app thing make sure to let them know like what you know what amp you will be you'll be using so they can kind of plan ahead should they bring their you know should they bring their gear and things like that like because it it uh it does make sense and it, it makes a difference to to know like what the set is going to be if i don't have a sound system and what the set is going to be if i do have a sound i won't play certain songs if i'm not going to plug in and uh, i will play um other songs if if uh, if i am going to it just depends, you know, if I'm going to plug in or not, it's going to make a big drastic difference in, in the set or in how I teach and stuff, you know, like I'm not going to be teaching something super delicate and soft if I don't, I'm not like plugging in. So uh, it'd be kind of tough to do like a, you know, like a harmonics or like a tapping, you know, kind of, uh, kind of workshop if, if not everybody can hear. Um, so I might do more of a strumming thing. So that all depends. So tell the person like what, what your setup is. Um, let them know like uh, the, the schedule as in like how much time do they have before people start coming in? How much, say, how much time they have like to talk to these people and when they leave and blah, 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 blah. Um, that's also really nice. Um, ask them what they're comfortable with, you know, like they might not be comfortable with like, uh, with just sticking around or like, you know, just socializing with everyone. Just ask them what their comfort zone is and then ask them what, you know, what they would like as far as like, um, some kind of, uh, like, like snack or, or drink in, in, in this, in the back. It's like, I'm not talking like, I, I need the finest purple grapes. It's like, no, just. I don't know here's here's like some some chips and crackers and some water or whatever or if they and they'll tell you oh, i prefer tea or whatever it's like oh what kind yeah. of tea would you like and you just get that and have some kind of you know it's the kind of thing and it makes it easy it takes out the guesswork so you're not like here's like 50 different sodas and teas that you know that i prepare <laughs> you can choose which, whichever one you want because like if it's at your house you don't want to just have like 50 different kinds of drink options and stuff like get them exactly what they want you know ask them before then and just just have that ready um like for you like before you guys play you don't really like to eat anything right no yeah yeah yeah. so like after a show i know like uh if they have you know like snacks or something there too it's yeah. like i'll eat after yeah, yeah yeah so that's where it was like if genevieve can have like even like granola or something small yeah just where it's, like, it's it doesn't have to be yeah it yeah. doesn't have to be like a spread or anything it just um it just has to be something there that just is keep them busy and just relax and make them feel like home um for me my uh uh my preference is to just have a bunch of water in in the back and then have two waters on stage mm -hmm. like one for me one for Aaron. that's it we're not like yeah. we're not like we need this specific brand of water like no it's just have waters cold not cold we don't care <laughs> you know what I mean? like, <laughs> uh if you really want to get fancy with it like just some kind of green tea in the back if you're you know if, if you really want to impress us and stuff you know just just have whatever green tea big low i don't care you know like it's uh <laughs> just just have that and that's like already kind of like hey that's nice you know yeah. but if it was just water and like uh just or I'm sure, like, if you set up, like, a water cooler and cups so they yeah. can just pour themselves if, water. If it, just, if it was just that, I'd be okay. But then again, yeah. like, that's me. So you got to ask them what, what they kind of want. So um, just have an open communication with, you know, with uh, with your guests and your, your artist guests and see what, you know, what they they want, what their, what their needs are and just, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's, reasonably right you know if they're like oh green m&ms or whatever it's like no i'm not doing that <laughs> you can also tell them that this is you my know? house <laughs> yeah you can, this is, that's also your house you're gonna be like i have water like that's that's it i have water and i don't know here's some like some beer nuts or whatever like and then just take that it's fine it sounds um, like a pretty small like yeah there's water thing, some so. pringles or whatever like i bought some grapes at the store you have grapes yeah. if you want like you know and that's it like just i think well, if Genevieve is like organizing this yeah. and then she's like also making who if it's multiple people who are going to play and then, yeah. you know, like she knows when they're going to play and how much time for each person. Yeah. Like let everybody know what kind of the whole plan for the night is and who's going to yeah. play where. Yeah. And then too, if because uh, if somebody knows somebody else, 
they might be like, oh, okay, like then I won't play this song because I know that's their big finisher. Yeah, yeah. Or I can even, yeah. like, if you let them know ahead of time and they get to talking and kind of hang out and stuff, they might be like, oh, for this song, can yeah. you come on stage yeah. and play with me? Just, too? you know, just have have a communication with you know with, with your guests and, and really just plan it out ask what that ask what they want ask what they're looking for and then you know within means just kind of tell them what you can provide yep yeah. or what you're willing to provide and stuff so that's that's it like i think you know if, if we're talking ukulele world i don't see anybody being a problem anyway unless i mean yeah i don't i don't even have an unless it's like everyone's pretty cool at least everyone that i've worked with is has been like kind of low-key you know mm-hmm. I don't know anyone who's like demanding I like I need this this and this I need I only play on like 30 inch speaker <laughs> like I don't you know what I mean yeah. I need I need my in ear monitors and it has we're, to be this whatever and like I, I've never met anyone like that that's I, like from you know, we know that we're ukulele players yeah, so. <laughs> we, we, know that we, we play a toy guitar <laughs> I heard like somebody like, oh, I'm turning this podcast off that's it now <laughs> I think it was a comedian who yeah. said like that for their writer right yeah. like for like what they want in their green room and everything mm-hmm. It's like they said, only green, uh, only the green uh, jelly bears or the only yeah. green jelly beans or something. And then they said, like, I don't actually expect anybody to do it, but I just want to do it to see if they will. And if they will, then I'm like, that place is a great venue. <laughs> check, yeah. Like I tell my manager, yeah. like, check that place yeah. off. We're but going back to that. I think place. that's that that's why? where it comes from. Yeah, isn't yeah. that why they do it? Yeah, They're yeah. like, oh, only like you know, like Specific only blue M Ms, so that they read the writer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and they, they make sure they that, know, you know that. Yeah, it, it, and it if they don't, then it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's not great. Or it's like, mm, yeah, we won't do it. Again. And we've you know we've done like high like you know um like high production stuff, and even though those high production ones were like. Oh, there was like water in the back and maybe like so i remember being uh we played a show in korea and like uh we they, they bring us to the back i guess just like an empty maybe like like a janitor's room or something that we were just like oh you can use this yeah kind of right and then uh um, there's there's like just some like box like cookies snacks and some water and stuff and then they came in with like uh with, with a burger <laughs> they're just like here have some lunch and whatever you know it's not like like here's like the finest whatever it's like here's this burger like from down the street like uh <laughs> we realize we haven't fed you in like a long time so here's <laughs> eat up uh there's some water and, and chips and cookies and stuff and i'm just like thanks <laughs> it wasn't like no how dare you give me greasy burgers before the show it's like that's <laughs> nah, I'll, I'll eat whatever at least people that i know in, in my circles were not really that demanding <laughs> okay next uh, this is a pretty specific one, but yeah. we'll see. Uh, sure. So Carl said, uh, uh, Troy's riff in Tropical Hawaiian Day that starts yeah. at F sharp minor. I know the sequence of notes, but I just can't find the correct descending rhythm. So it sounds wrong. Any insights slash tips? Mm, so he's sound with the... Uh... That's what he's... That is his... So, um, so it's actually... I know I taught it in F sharp minor, but it's actually it should be here on the third fret because it would be G minor, which is correct to the key of F. So what you um, the the trick here is uh, knowing when to slide down and hearing the slide. What people get wrong is they're not doing the slide down. This is what I mean. Oh. Yeah. So you're doing the slide after you pluck the string. Yeah, so slide, and then G, and then play the middle two, and then slide, and hit the G. So it's like a triplet. So well, I'm hitting this A, but you don't have to hit the A if you don't want to. So, so boom, pa dum, pa dum, pa dum, pa da da da. Yeah, um, the timing. Bum, 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 bum. So it's triplets. Da 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 da. 
So, um, triple, triple it, triple it, triple it. But it's not, I don't know, yeah, it's, uh, it's not fully even. I feel like the way you can think of it is you want the, the slide, like the note that it lands on, you want it to land on the downbeat. Mm. So it's da 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 Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. almost like you're you're <laughs> just kind of <laughs> squeezing yeah. it into the space that where, yeah. it, where it needs <laughs> yeah. to be. So I don't know. Some just you got you just gotta listen to the song mm -hmm. over and over again and and yeah. try to be able to. My do my it. best advice. That's what that's what people miss is the uh, the slide. Like because the slide's not there, it doesn't sound right. So the slide has to. So that has to be in there. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, like the slides happen on the the upbeat, mm -hmm. and then it like lands on the right yeah. note. Yeah. So you want to make sure that those right notes are like on the downbeat, right, right. and then kind of if you get that, and it's like Aaron said, like where it's like you're just like shoving it in there. It's like you should get it right. It yeah, should, it should be okay. So like notes, as far as notes goes, you're going from G minor and going up to A minor. So is, and the reason why we go all the way down to the uh, to the F sharp minor is because we're trying to settle down to the F. But instead of settling down to the F like right away, we hit the riff. Then we're then that's how we uh, land on that F. So there's that G minor. Because really, then the note should be bum 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 bum. That's what he's going for. So, bum, 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 ba -da -da bum. Yeah. I feel like you could almost do it where it's like not thinking about the yeah. slides and you're like hitting the notes. So it's just like you're trying to get the timing at first. Mm -hmm. And because if you get the timing right, like, and you just don't take your fingers off, like, yeah. the slides kind of like get fit in there anyways, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, we do have the tabs for it uh, on our website on the lesson for Tropical Hawaiian Day. Yeah. And so, yeah, I guess the way that I wrote it... Um, F sharp. Because uh, I think I, I taught it that way. Because it's just... You just, you just yeah, all the way the from the F sharp. But, yeah. but uh, I mean, as far as the notes, like when written out in, in musical no notation... Yeah. Is it's just sixteenth notes. It, da, 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 there's da, 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 a there's a rest at the very beginning, yeah. and then it's just sixteenth notes. So mm, it's not a necessarily a triplet. Da, but da, 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 da. I think because <laughs> the, 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 because the song has like a swing, yeah. it ends up having yeah. that triplet feel. feel. Anyways, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, so. yeah. I'm just thinking of a triplet because that's like the ba da ba da ba da 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 I mean, yeah, in your mm -hmm. in your mind, you can yeah. think of it that way because mm -hmm. it has to be segmented like that, right? Yeah. Whatever yeah. you like, whatever works where it's like you can hear the rhythm, then mm -hmm. yeah, think of it that way. Yeah. But whether mm -hmm. it's like sixteenths or triplets or whatever, just try and get whatever works for you. Yeah, yeah. Right? and and right? just listen to the original song and just try to trace it yeah <laughs> trace over it. or even like we did yeah like yeah. if you just if, even if you're just like listening to it in the car over and over yeah. and then moving your fingers where you think it's supposed yeah, to be yeah, like true, you know yeah. like i i try to do that sometimes i'm mm -hmm. not the, the best at picking anyway yeah. so so it takes a lot for me to figure out how to how to pull off mm -hmm. stuff so it, a lot of just listening to the original song and mm -hmm. being able to time your hands the mm -hmm. same time that they're doing it Sometimes that, that like tuplets or that subdivisions are hard for me to like think about like musically. So instead I just kind of think of like, here's my start point and here's my end point. And I have so many like, you know, yeah. I have like yeah, a quarter you know, note to get there from here to here. And as long as I can kind of like get it in that time, yeah. it's like, okay. And that's... if you can land the one on the next measure, then yeah. you're fine. Perfect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> here's, here's the amount of time that you have. 
Yeah, uh, fill it up. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> basically, like, he doesn't want. <laughs> like that part is just yeah. one measure. Yeah. And then as long as you get the da 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 part, yeah. yeah. As long as you land that first <laughs> note of the da 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 da, you're that fine. That is that is pure jammer mentality, man. I love it. I love that. I, love I mean, that. yeah. And it's like, kinda, just press. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like you're not gonna get it when you're oh. practicing it by yourself, and you're not gonna like have it. But it is just kind of the thing. The more you play it, though, like mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. rhythm should like naturally get ingrained into yeah. you. That it's just like I know <laughs> I have to make it. I have to make that that first beat. Yeah. So yeah. whatever yes. I do to get there, I'm you know all the notes that uh, need to be in there. You <laughs> squeeze it in. <laughs> okay, uh, do we have time for one more? Yeah, 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 one more. Yeah, and we have. Uh, so Andre said, "Do we have a couple more questions? Is that what you said? Uh, we'll, we'll do have, it fast. We'll, well do at fast. least like this question, I figure we can get this one. Okay, right. okay, okay. Uh, it's midnight here, just like on Friday at the jam. There are silent guitars. Are there actually silent ukuleles or other ideas so that the neighbors can sleep during the Friday jam? Um, I don't know about silent ukuleles. You can get like um, you know, like those kind of electric ones. Yep. And yeah, and do it that way. I the think that's the closest thing. Risa, yeah, 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 Risa yeah. strumsticks or the yeah, yeah. electric. Um, ukuleles. one that you know. I mean, if. If you have like kind of a beater ukulele, you know, like that you wouldn't mind just kind of like um, modding, you can just like stuff some like some uh, some socks or like any like the handkerchief like inside the, the sound hole so that it like prevents it from like, yeah, from uh, I wouldn't do it to an expensive ukulele because you might no. hurt the uh, like the, the bracing. bracings and stuff like or- that. But if it's a cheaper uke, you could probably so you could buy a cheap like $50 ukulele yeah. and then just shove a bunch of you know like yeah, uh, yeah. stuff in there like paper or yeah, I, I like socks because they're you know like it will uh, it will absorb a lot of that and then you have yourself a silent ukulele. Now, now, that's what I would do. Instead of trying to figure out like what brand sells this or whatever, just have a YouTube. That's just your practice ukulele. You know, like maybe fifty bucks, hundred bucks. Yeah, that's kind of like that is. And if you get a ukulele with like a piezo pickup, yeah, it's like you can shove all the stuff in there, and then it should still pick up the strings, right? Yeah, yeah So yeah. you can still plug yeah, it in. Plug it in. <laughs> I don't know. It's a silent ukulele, you know, like and just shove a bunch of stuff in there if, that, if you're not worried about like you know damaging the inside because it's what like 50 100 bucks and stuff like who cares you know <laughs> yeah. yeah but definitely don't do it to an no, ukulele that you want to yeah, even if it's yeah. an expensive or not an expensive one don't yeah. do it to an ukulele you want to play or yes, you want yes. to like this on though so you could create a silent ukulele if you want or get like a solid body uke and you can do it that way yeah mm-hmm. yeah I think Kala makes a solid body yeah. ukulele. Uh, the original, the Risa mm-hmm. strum, strum sticks. sticks. I feel like that's yeah. as close a, maybe, to to those silent guitars yeah. as mm-hmm. you can maybe you like get. eBay, like old like Ellie Ukes and LA stuff. Ukes like, did, you know, yeah. You could do that. I guess the thing like electric ukuleles, I feel like they're really cool, and mm-hmm. that is like a ready-made thing. But also the thing with some of them is that they use like steel strings too so even that like yeah you would have to get mm. your head around steel strings. yeah but. yeah so so the ones uh, like a solid body ukulele with nylon strings or like yeah. regular right re- regular plastic strings yeah. would probably be as be close good. to uh to, to silent it. yeah next uh that's yeah. a quick one that's it uh, i think that's pretty much it okay um, cool yeah. i hope people didn't mind me rambling about like albums and songs that i like <laughs> it's a nice little you know like insight of like what what do i listen to as far as like ukulele because you know i listen to a lot of different music and stuff but if you're you know if you're wondering ukulele specific music that i listen to it would be those like those tracks lately you know, I I mean, I can make it a thing. Maybe like once a month, I'll just tell you guys what what I'm kind of digging, and um, so you guys can check it out and just kind of broaden your uh, your ukulele, um, you know, listening. Yeah, I mean, before we, we when we had Mike on, yeah. we would each do our own like uh, suggestions of yeah. just things that we like mm-hmm. too. So we can kind of bring that back. Yeah. But where it's just like for you, just and maybe even like not only ukulele music, like just whatever music you think would be cool for people to check out loneliness by ginger root <laughs> like okay, another yeah. ginger root song loneliness okay. like i think it came out a year ago or whatever awesome ginger root's always great yeah uh that but i've been digging that a lot lately i've been listening to a lot of oldies it's... uh specifically tony orlando and don has been stuck in my head <laughs> i've been playing knock three times candida and what are you doing sunday for like a 
for all basically all weekend i was just doing it before we started the show <laughs> yeah. it's like gender roots is like if you want to see somebody who should have been born in the 60s or 70s yeah, yeah. but was born now like, yeah. yeah it's like it's it's like giving me cassiopeia vibes but like a uh, student student in a dorm <laughs> yeah, a student in a dorm but cassiopeia <laughs> I mean, and it's like it's very intentional it's not yeah, like yeah. it's because he actually is a student in the yeah, dorm. Yeah, yeah it's like he's he knows what yeah he it's that he's really he's really good so yeah. though in general like that aesthetic has been coming back right yes yeah yeah, that, yeah. that so Miami uh, Vice pop. 80s yeah, yeah, yeah. synth it's, wave yeah that, synth so. wave yeah but also Cassiopeia I've been listening to a bunch of Cass- if you guys want some like some crazy like you know like raw uh, jazz fusion stuff and it's it's uh, it's like a Japanese band like from the 70s and 80s amazing <laughs> Cassiopeia just I mean they're legend people should already kind of know Cassiopeia right but if you haven't Cassiopeia good stuff there's, yeah. there's one more thing. Yeah, uh, okay. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, Drew said, Hey, Aldrian, I just wanted to ask on the video with Cynthia Lynn, when you guys play Creep, what were you doing on the intro? It looks like you were just pressing the notes. I don't understand it. I don't know. Ooh, do you I, remember? I don't. That's a long time ago. Do you think maybe he's talking about tapping or something? I'm thinking just like, that's what he means. By I'd have to see, because I don't want to say, and yeah. then, you know. That's not what it is. Well, let's leave. Let's leave this as a cliffhanger. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, let's we'll leave it as a cliffhanger. <laughs> I'll next, look it up, and then that's the week. first thing we talk about next week. Yeah. How about that? Okay. Yeah. 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 Find out next time on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> or next episode of Gulala Underground Podcast. So, if you guys enjoyed this podcast, here is some ways that you guys can support us. Um, we keep this podcast free, ad free, up until just you know now. But it's not necessarily an ad, right? Um, this is a uh, we we you know we do the uh, the video version, we do the audio version. Of course, you guys can check out on you know, wherever you guys get your podcasts from, and uh, and the video version is over on YouTube. If you guys want to support us, uh, easiest way to do so: hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button, like adding a, a comment down you know down in the comment section. All those you guys know how to YouTube, right? All those help honestly you know it helps us get seen by other people. That therefore growing this podcast. Um, if, uh, if you guys want to support us in other ways, you can go check out ukuleleunderground.com. Ukuleleunderground.com is where we teach a bunch of these songs. We talked about body surfing. Um, that is available over at UU+, Plus, which is a subscription service that we have over at ukuleleunderground.com, which uh, grants you access to all our exclusive material, including um, soul ukulele solo songs and body surfing. So if you want to learn how to play body surfing, go check that out. Um, and also we have a uh, we have a shop if you want to wear uh, you know the, the ukulele on the ground colors and uh, and check out um, tutorials by uh, some ukuleles we have ukuleles by Islander and by Kanilea ukuleles um, they're they're available on shop that on the ground dot com so those all of those ways that you guys can uh, can can help us out and uh, and support our little podcast our little website and stuff and just. That's it. It's just three guys just doing, just talking about yeah. stuff. But, having you know, a good time. Having a good time. Having a, having a good time. Okay. But yeah. So, uh, and also we have, uh, follow us on Instagram. This is another, I, I never get to say that, but um, follow us on Instagram. Uke Underground on Instagram. Okay. Uke Underground. It's, it's, it's very uh, lively now. You know, our Instagram. We, <laughs> it's uh, basically just clips from this show. <laughs> but it's awesome. You know what I mean? If you're like, oh, like, uh, what did they talk about this week or whatever? Or like, or I just really wanted that part, you know, like isolated. And you guys add some really cool, quirky stuff to the, uh, you know, to the clips. So that makes it really interesting sure. and it would help if you guys share that you know like on on your so if that's that's how you guys can support us you know like uh subscribe or, or follow us on instagram um and, and uh yeah or if like you and like comment comments and all that good stuff it, it all it you know it, it all helps and um or if you tag us in things you know what i mean if you get a new ukulele or whatever or if you're playing a new song on instagram tag us we'd, we'd love to see all right yeah so uh, anything don't else? tag us indiscriminately though, because like yeah, that's true. There's like a bunch of people who yeah. just like whenever they put up anything, oh, yeah, they just yeah, tag yeah. us. That's so. Make it make sense. Yeah, <laughs> if you if sense. you like learn the song on ukulele yeah, on the yes, ground, yes. we love seeing yeah, those. We love seeing that. But you know, don't just use us as a <laughs> yeah <laughs> to to be visible to other people. That's that's not cool. You know, like and. Uh, Kind of like, yeah, we have a Facebook group and it's not really ukulele on the ground related at all. <laughs> just people self-promoting things, yeah. you know. Just, That's okay. 
You That's know, what Facebook what is, is for. It is what it is. But yeah, like, so um, on Instagram, tag or, us. Okay. Uh, I guess another thing people can do too is if you want your question answered, you know, uh, send it into questions at yes. googleunderground.com. Yeah. And then if you send it in early too, we'll use it for like next week's show, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. We'll see you next time. Have a great week, guys. We'll see you folks on Friday for Aloha Friday. Live jam. Jam along with us. It's 1 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time Friday. We'll see you then. Have a great week. Aloha. Aloha.